I'm sure you have heard no means no. I'm sure you have heard no spending without an appropriation. That is key concept number four. Again, as Steve said, an appropriation is a legislative body action. They appropriate money. They say, yes, we're going to set this money aside to spend for a particular purpose. And the idea here is that you can't spend or the, the, the governing body can't spend unless that amount was appropriated for that purpose. So I think that's a pretty basic concept, but I don't think it can ever be said enough that if you don't have a proper appropriation, you're not going to be able to spend for that purpose. And proper appropriation, that goes back in time to what Steve was talking about, starting with the procedural requirements, with the notice, with the discuss or disclose at a budget hearing. All of that is part of having a procedurally proper appropriation. There are exceptions, of course, as there are exceptions to every rule, the no means no rule has exceptions. Of course, transfer authority still exists um, in the governing body under 32 section 10, although they can't transfer to a purpose that doesn't exist or that has been deleted properly um, or you know zeroed out, which is the equivalent of deleted just going to say for a moment that when we're thinking about transfer authority and again I've already said that you know the voters and the budget committee can't restrict the selectmen's transfer authority um, a zeroed out purpose that would prohibit transfer we are talking about a zeroed out or deleted purpose on the posted DRA budget form so the legislative body would have to zero out, for example, police on the municipal budget form in order to say that this is a purpose for which no money can be spent. Sometimes there's confusion. Sometimes voters think there's an ability to sort of go into the weeds and delete purposes that are represented on the so-called municipal chart of accounts, which is normally a very detailed form that each municipality has in order to help track expenditures and in order to properly calculate the budget that goes on to the municipal budget form. But we're talking about what I like to call the big line items, which are the line items that show up on the DRA form. Other exceptions, legal judgments. If there's a legal judgment against the town, the town can't say we didn't appropriate money, we can't pay that legal judgment, they have to pay it. Um, there is DR, You can get DRA permission to overspend the bottom line or add an appropriation, but that's with DRA permission. Um, and there are other sort of prior mandates that you can't get out of, uh, federal or state requirements, the classic example being welfare, um, which a town is required to provide even if the welfare budget has run out. So that is a requirement. Other exceptions, you are a March town meeting mm -hmm. in towns um, with the March town meeting in the January to December fiscal year. Obviously, there is a gap in time between the beginning of the year and the town meeting at which appropriations are made. And what the statute says, and this is 32 section 13 paragraph two, is that the governing body can spend for that time period prior to the town meeting making its appropriations they can spend because obviously they have to be able to and those expenditures would be have to be reasonable in light of the prior years approved appropriations and purposes so you're trying to mimic last year's sort of for that status quo period prior to the town meeting in March where the appropriations are made even more exceptions unanticipated revenue under RSA 31 section 95-B if the legislative body has given approval under this statute to the governing body to accept unanticipated revenue, the governing body has the ability to do that. There are some requirements such as for unanticipated revenue of $10,000 or more, there has to be um, a public hearing and acceptance of unanticipated revenue can't require the expenditure of additional funds unless those additional funds were appropriated um, as a way of accepting the grant. Capital reserve and trust funds with agents to expend. So trust funds where the legislative body has said, yes, selectmen, you are the agents to expend. You can expend from that trust fund during the year without further legislative approval. They can spend for that purpose, consistent with why the fund was created. 
other funds like the conservation fund, heritage fund, um, revolving funds, water and sewer revolving funds, those are funds that have particular entities that have the ability to spend money from those funds consistent with the purpose for which the fund exists. Um, so if there is a situation where um, they're, the sort of the selectmen are out of money for a particular purpose, of course they have transfer authority. So they're looking in the budget to find places where they can transfer money to the purpose that they need it for. Um, we've already talked about anticip unanticipated funds and the acceptance authority, DRA permission to overspend, and then sort of as a, a very sort of last result, I think, special meetings. Because keep in mind that a special meeting where money is going to be appropriated, you have to have prior court approval, all right? So it's a big deal in order to have a special meeting. Just a couple words here on multi-year agreements. There are sort of different types of multi-year agreements. Collective bargaining is sort of the classic example. You have costs over a period of years based on a contract that's been agreed to. And even though the contract may have been agreed to, the cost items are still subject to legislative body approval because the legislative body appropriates money. Mm -hmm. um, the way that it works with collective bargaining agreements is that the cost items, the expense that is associated with this multi-year collective bargaining agreement goes to the voters for approval. All right, and so the voters appropriate it, the voters say yes, and what, what happens is the total cost items for the life of the collective bargaining agreement have to be disclosed up front to the voters during that, during that fiscal year at that town meeting. And if the voters have that disclosure and they say yes, and they say yes to that article and they adopt those cost items, they, that is a way that one town meeting sort of binds into the future. It's a way of binding to a multi-year contract and it is authorized. And in fact, it goes beyond collective bargaining agreements because it can happen with other multi-year agreements that the governing body wants to enter into. And they can do that, but it's the same idea that the full cost of that multi-year contract must be adequately disclosed to the legislative body <coughs> and adopted by the legislative body in order for the legislative body to bind going forward. Because mm -hmm. remember, the idea is that appropriations lapse at the end of the year. So if you want the legislative body to approve multiple years of appropriations for a contract, they're going to have to have those cost items for the whole life of the contract disclosed and say yes to those cost items for the full life of the contract. Multi-year equipment leases, there are some special year, uh, rules with multi-year equipment leases. Obviously, equipment leases are an important part of any municipality. If there is a so-called escape clause in the multi-year lease agreement, that it's a simple majority because the voters are actually adopting the amount for each year of the multi-year lease at each town meeting. So they do it each year, and the escape clause allows the governing body to get out of the contract if the voters don't appropriate it in any given year. So if it's a five-year lease and the voters, and it has an escape clause, and the voters say yes the first three years, and they say no the fourth year, um, there's no appropriation, they can't spend for that purpose, the governing body can use the escape clause to get out of the multi-year lease. If there's no escape clause, which means they can't get out of it, um, then it's considered, um, um, long-term debt under 33 section 7e and there are some different rules for it and this term Sanborn eyes that you see that we have up on the slide here that comes from a case um, the, out of Sanborn, Sanborn um, school district Sanborn yeah. school district and sort of that's where the term came from yeah. was how do, how are collective bargaining agreements properly adopted and we now say that we have to Sanbornize them which simply means adequately disclose the cost items mm -hmm. for the life of the contract and it applies to all multi-year contracts not just collective bargaining bargaining agreements.